All I have to say is after watching this Raw, Adam Rose F T W bitches. To me, when I look at this episode of Monday Night Raw, this Raw felt like it wasn't all that great. There were a lot of moments where it just, nothing really done anything for me. There were some good moments, there were some great moments, but there was no moment that made me feel like there was a standout, outstanding moment, which I was hoping for, because this was a show that's coming off of an Extreme Rules special event. A special event, and a Raw, after a special event, should actually mean something. But even though they're, lo they're they are looking like they're going forward with things, I was still waiting for that moment that would stand out amongst the rest. I never really got that. But like I said, there were some good moments. There were some okay moments. Some not so great, which I will get to later on. But the one thing that I really didn't enjoy about this Raw is that both the Intercontinental Championship and the United States Championship were defended. Which makes me believe that there's some hope. And I'm uh, emphasizing the word some here because they still need to do a lot more with the Intercontinental and the U.S. Championship. Uh, develop storylines between two guys going for those secondary titles to actually make the titles mean something. But we got something out of it from this Raw. So it is a start. And speaking of starts, the show kicked off with the 20-man over-the-top rope battle royal for the United States Championship. Going into it, I'm thinking, okay, Dean Am Ambrose could actually lose the championship because usually on a show after a special event, usually a, someone drops a title or someone uh, wins a title. And we got both here. We got uh, Dean Ambrose, the pretty much facing the world, which I was actually hoping for. I think there were some missed opportunities coming out of this 20-man battle royal. Even though this was a well-done battle royal, it was one of the best battle royal royals I've seen, I would have rather seen something along the lines of um, uh, Triple H paying off uh, most of these guys that's in the battle royal and have them go out and uh, eliminate Dean Ambrose right from the very start of the match. That's what I would have done differently. Or you you could have had Dean Ambrose that he um, went to the final two, have one member of Evolution come out, say like Randy Orton, cause Dean Ambrose the match, uh, which leads to a new United States champion, and uh, you set up your main event for Raw, uh, Dean Ambrose versus Randy Orton. That would have been great, so there were some missed opportunities coming out of this battle royal, but like I said, this wasn't actually a not half bad way to kick off Monday Night Raw. Here you have um, uh, Sheamus winning the battle royal at the end. I question it. I don't think Sheamus should be a guy that needs a champion. What he needs is a um, character change more than he does a title, because let's face it, a face Sheamus is a boring Sheamus. I like to see him go back as that bully when he first came on the scene. Or at least um, something different. Something emphasizing that a lot more. I would have rather seen that. I would have rather seen a uh, newcomer. Or someone that um, the is only uh, getting their career started in the WWE from the Battle Royals. Someone like Titus O'Neil who was uh, coming off of the... Um, Split from Darren Young. I would have liked to seen him win the uh, title or someone like a Santino, but Sheamus. Uh, I, I don't understand uh, why the WWE decided to put Sheamus as the United States Championship. Maybe because they think that uh, putting the title on someone whose career uh, is starting could potentially. The ruin their career and probably go nowhere with it. And I think with Sheamus, he could probably, maybe, and I hence the word maybe, go somewhere 
And I like that, that they did tease a heel turn from Sheamus when he was talking to Renee Young and told Dean Ambrose, well, tonight wasn't your night. Your luck ran out, fella. It was something along those lines. And I'm here I'm thinking, hmm, that looks a little bit heelish. And I think uh, the WWE should um, go with that. I guess the logic is, okay, Sheamus is the champion. You, you might as well throw in a character change as a bonus. But I would have rather seen the char character change anyway instead of putting the uh, U.S. title um, on his waist. I, I, anyway, moving on. Um, and like I said, I like the fact that um, both the mid Carter titles were on the line. And we saw Ben News Barrett versus Big E for the Intercontinental Championship. This one's Big E's rematch from Extreme Rules. And I thought overall this match was a little bit better than the match uh, at Extreme Rules. The, this felt a lot smoother. The chemistry was a little bit more um, uh, there, I think. And uh, even though there were similar elements of the match that they had the night before, it was, like I said, it was a little better. We got to see Ben News Barrett go over, but the little things matter. The way he won, I questioned because I thought that Ben News Barrett was going to go over with this new gimmick as a babyface, and WWE just decided to um, have him... Uh, Kind of uh, have a dirty win, poke to the eye, uh, elbow, one, two, three. I thought that was a little weird because, to me, the Bad News Bearer gimmick is a, a gimmick that's going really over well with the fans, and they're cheering him a little bit more, and I think that dirty win kind of um, uh, put him back into that heel position, and I don't think that was a smart uh, decision at all. And speaking of dumb decisions that the WWE, I think, done was aligning Paul Heyman with Cesaro. The more I think about it, the more I believe that they should split up these two sooner rather than later. And the match he had with Rob Van Dam just proved my point. Even though this was an okay match, I was a little unsure with the ending at first. But the more I thought about it, the more I think that the little things matter. The way Cesaro uh, lost this match with RVD winning by disqualification when um, uh, Cesaro had RVD cornered upside down and start pounding on him. The referee counted 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and he just wouldn't stop so he rang the bell, gave the uh, no DQ victory to Rob Van Dam. And this is the WWE's way of making sure Cesaro remains a heel and I don't understand why because he was coming off of uh, splitting up with Jack Swagger and the pre-show at Wrestlemania winning the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal and he should have just ran with that uh, don't even put him together with Paul Heyman and just build him up as a baby face I think that was a dumb decision on the part of WWE for aligning him, Paul Heyman with Cesaro uh, the music is not even growing on me either. It's just there. I think they should really change that as well. And to me, this is the WWE's way of keeping Rob Van Dam relevant as well to put him in a feud with Cesaro. And like I said, this is dumb on the part of WWE to book Cesaro in a feud involving another babyface. I think the own the way they should go with it is probably have Cesaro probably go over. This could potentially be a good match at a pay-per-view, like, or should I say special event, uh, coming up in a few weeks called Payback. And I think after that, they should start doing better things with Cesaro. That's all I have to say. Uh, moving on, we got to see a promo from Bray Wyatt. Comes out. He tells the story of a conversation that he had with Abigail, um, said that he wants to uh, change the world because the world has its own wicked ways. And he was a nobody uh, but before he met Sister Abigail, but now he became a somebody when he bet John Cena at Extreme Rules. And I like how he mentioned the children as well because... Um, the John Cena fan base caters to the children, and now he's saying he has the whole world in his hands. He's basically saying that he has the whole um, John Cena audience in his hands, the kids. 
and uh, he says that um, he wants to be um, uh, involved with people and want to make them better people and um, he wants the whole C nation and his world to burn down so that it would be reborn into the world of the Wyatt family, the world of Bray Wyatt and he shall and uh, people should uh, remember Bray Wyatt as a god. He was actually acting a little baby face when he was mentioning uh, these people like homeless people, how he wanted to help them. It was really interesting and Bray Wyatt always delivers on his mic. He is magic on the mic. Uh, remember those words and I think that uh, to me when I look at Bray Wyatt He's one of the best talkers right now in the WWE, and he's one guy I really look forward to watching even before Raw starts. Even the week before, I always I always think, okay, what is Bray Wyatt going to do now on Raw? Uh, I remember feeling that way when CM Punk was on Raw, uh, even Daniel Bryan at one point, but now it just feels like Daniel Bryan has uh, starting to disintegrate a bit not much I'm not saying a lot but not much but just a bit uh, when it comes to excitement to get me going to see that superstar on the show Bray Wyatt is that guy now he's a great talker he is a compelling character he's very interesting he n always fail I mean he he never fails on delivering promos on the mic he's just that guy he's that guy for me when i look forward to watching wwe monday night raw moving on we got to see cody rhodes versus ryback in a match this match just felt like it was just there on the show here we had ryback go over and there was an idea i uh, was watching on the wrestling gurus channel that uh, mitch uh, Put up shout out to you my man you're doing fantastic on you on your reviews and uh, his idea was uh, a character change for gold dust for cody rhodes to remain as that baby face even though they're planting the seeds of cody rhodes um going heel really where would you go with it and i think that um the wwe i think should remain cody rhodes as a baby face and have uh, that um, alter ego of Goldust come back. Maybe not the name of Black Rain, but something along those lines where he's that dark character with a uh, rat or a mouse as his mascot. I think that would be great to see. And it would almost kind of make sense in a way, even though you can make the argument, yes, okay, Cody Rose is going to keep losing and losing match after match until he can't take it no more. You could do the complete uh, 180, the opposite of it, and have um, Gold Dust uh, fed up of Cody Rhodes losing match after match after match, and uh, the, till a point where um, he decides to uh, he wants to make sure that Cody Rhodes uh, gets some hyped up more momentum or something along those lines, and change character all of a sudden just completely out of nowhere. It'll be something like out of Vince Russo writing. It would be completely awesome, I think. Uh, moving on. Uh, Lost Menadors and El Torito throwing out candies to the fans. And here you have 3 and B interrupting. And uh, basically what this was was 3 and B wanting to call it a truce with Lost Menadors and El Torito. And then it, and then it turns out to be an all-out... Uh, the fight well, with all these guys, the shenanigans taking place, and I like the moment where <laughs> uh, Heath Slater was trying to ole his way out of the situation, and he got tossed out by Los Matadors. This was a fun segment, entertaining, nothing more. Uh, moving on, Alexander Rusev versus Kofi Kingston, or should I say Rusev right now? It seems like the WWE is going down the name changes like they've done with Cesaro and Big E. And now it's probably just they're going to this whole Rusev name change. Probably a little bit better. Um, because the whole Alexander Rusev name, a little bit of a mouthful. I can understand it. Um, uh, like I said, uh I'm not really interested in this whole Alexander Rusev being on Raw. I think he should have stuck on NXT. 
to help uh, build himself a lot more and probably go after Adrian Neville's NXT Championship. That would probably would, would be a lot smart decision on the part of WWE just to have him remain on NXT so he can develop himself maybe a little bit more and uh, challenge the top guy on that show instead of um, rushing into uh, Raw and putting uh, him in Jabber squash matches where he went over Kofi Kingston. Uh, and I think when I look at Alexander Rusev and his manager, I feel like Lana will probably end up having a better career than Alexander Rusev. Just saying. And then we got to see Daniel Bryan go one-on-one -on -one with Alberto Del Rio. I thought this was actually a surprisingly great match. These two delivered a really good match here. And Alberto Del Rio is a guy that I think when he's in the ring... With the right people, he can deliver a great match. Similar to Randy Orton, when Randy Orton is in the ring with Daniel Bryan. Guys like him, Randy Orton facing Bryan or Ziggler, even smaller guys. Yeah, he's great. This is the same thing here with Alberto Del Rio. When he's in there with a great wrestler like Daniel Bryan, he delivers in the ring. And these two had a really good match. And uh, before this match happened... Uh, there were a few backstage segments going on with Stephanie, Bree, and Daniel Bryan. Stephanie telling Bryan that, okay, Bryan, you can compete on Raw, but you can also leave. And then she decides to make a complete 180 and says that, uh, Daniel Bryan, if you don't compete in the ring, uh, you breach your contract and um, I'll strip you for, for the title. So he pretty much had no choice to uh, be in this match with Alberto Del Rio. This, and you can see this written all over that Stephanie McMahon is definitely up to something. He, she's up to no good. And here you had Kane come out. Well, not really come out, but his pyro hit and Daniel Bryan and Bree ran to the car. The car's already there. And, of course, the car wouldn't start. Here it goes. Cliché, predictable, cheesy, something out of a horror movie kind of crap. Here we go. The car wouldn't start. Here you have Bree in the, already in the car. Daniel Bryan's trying to fix it. i seen this coming. Damn, Kane is in the backseat of the car. And uh, he's attacking Bree. And Bree's... Oh... Her screams are torture. I would rather hear nails on the chalkboard. Her acting is just flat out, absolutely no good, terrible. Oh. It was like, ah, ah, ah. Oh, just stop. Just stop acting. Stop talking. Stop screaming. Oh. I just got crawled all under my skin. It was that horrible. And then not only that, uh, here you have Brian um, uh, trying to ward off Kane. He um, gets back in the car, goes off a bit. He stops. Here's Kane laying there on the back, uh, just laid out flat. And Daniel Bryan looks over to see if Kane is out. And then... Kane sits up, of course. I mean, I don't even understand why Dan Bryan even stopped to check on Kane. That was dumb. That was stupid. That that made look Daniel Bryan look stupid. And he uh, just decides after that he's going to go off anyway. Now, people make the argument that, uh, oh, Daniel Bryan's a weak champion. He should, he should have been fighting. Uh, Kane here, but the way I see it, you know what, he's protecting his wife, Bree, to make sure that she's not hurt, so uh, in that situation, I'd have to go with that route, uh, am I looking forward to seeing a rematch between these two, no, and I think this segment, after he had the match with Alberto Del Rio, just proves that they should stop with this feud. Like I said, this segment had the makings of a cheesy, bad horror movie. It was just god-awful. I'm uninterested in this whole thing now with Daniel Bryan and Kane. There's no reason now to continue this. Even though the WWE is going to do it, they're going to do something with payback, they should end it at payback. Just kill the pain after, please. 
Moving on, we got to see Jack Swagger and Zim Coulter come out. Zim Coulter cuts a promo. He has this sign. I love that he brings out the signs. Good on Zim Coulter. And then Zim Coulter's deportion list. And now the back, there's names like Heyman, Cesaro, Emma, uh, Paige, even Sheamus. I liked how he said that <laughs> that uh, Paige and Sheamus... Never saw the sun since 1977. That was funny as hell. And then, oh, 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 Adam Rose comes out. Hell yeah. I've been waiting all week to see Adam Rose come out to see what he's going to do. And this was freaking awesome. I don't care what people say. If this was a weak way to debut Adam Rose, this should have been a mess. He should have... Uh, hit Jack Swagger a lot more. This was fun. Here he is kicking the uh, uh, Jack Swagger, throws him out. Party in the ring. Zim Coulter looking like he was about to dance when he goes up. <laughs> this was absolutely fun. This was incredible. This was the best thing all night that I've seen on Raw. Hell yeah, Adam Rose, FTW. That was awesome. And then we get to the main event of the show. And it was the Wyatt family versus the Shield. And like I said, there is a really good missed opportunity to have Dean Ambrose versus Randy Orton later on, on uh, for the main event. And then you have a la war between um, Evolution and the Shield. <sighs> they could have done there, but I don't know why like, they didn't. But this was a good way to actually close off the show. Here you have the Wyatt family versus the Shield. Bodies flying everywhere. Seth Rollins uh, uh, getting his moments in. I like that he um, used the uh, standing shooting star. That was great, great moment. Here in, in the closing moments, you had um, both Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins flying out of the ring and landing on Luke Harper and Eric Rowan. And, uh, and in the ring, I like how uh, the focal point was Roman Reigns and that um, Evolution, he was, about, he was about to have the match won for his team, and then Evolution comes out, interferes, and um, costs Roman Reigns the match. Sister Abigail, one, two, three, and then after that, the all out uh, brawl between Evolution and uh, the Shield continues. Here you have Roman Reigns being in the center of the ring. Like I said, he's the focal point here. I like that he is, and. Um, and I like that he uh, actually put up a little bit of a fight here with Evolution. You had him counter the Pentagree the first time. Randy Orton nails the RKO. And then followed by the Pentagree on Roman Reigns. I think everything that they've done here from this segment alone was actually pretty good. I like that they're continuing with this whole feud with the Shield and the, and the uh, Evolution. And I'm curious to see where they're going to go with this. I wonder because Dean Ambrose lost the U.S. title that they're going to develop some sort of um, split from the shield down the road, maybe at payback. We'll see what happens. And overall, this show, I thought, was not all that great. There were some good moments, some decent moments, some okay moments, but nothing really stood out. So you probably won't remember this show. Um, I'd probably give the show maybe a 5.1 on the Richter scale because this show... This would have been a good show. I'll put it to you this way. This would be a good show if you want to get squashed by an earthquake. Holy shit. <laughs> and if you saw this episode of Raw, what did you think about it? Whatever you thought, comment below. Let me know. While you're at it, you can hit that subscribe button down below this video. You can also follow MRB Wrestling on Twitter. And you can like us on Facebook at the Make Rock and Bolt Wrestling Review Show. And on a final note to all you viewers watching, get plenty of rest and always do your best.